Welcome back to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogley's Guitar Show. Current event time! I wake up this morning and what has Gibson done today? They're suing Dean's parent company, Armadillo Distribution Enterprises, for up to $14 million on the grounds of trademark infringement, trademark counterfeiting, trademark dilution, and unfair competition. Why $14 million, you ask? Well, the law gives them the right to seek up to $2 million per infringement. So that means there are seven infringements on this lawsuit. Now to preface this video, this is nothing new. This is not necessarily the new era of Gibson coming in to sue everybody. This actually started back in the Henry J era in October of 2017 when the first cease and desist letter was sent to Dean. However, since then, Gibson fighting their bankruptcy, it wasn't until May of 2019 when another cease and desist was sent and this court filing that's just making news headlines everywhere. However, with Gibson's video that was posted to their YouTube channel warning manufacturers about stuff like this that was later removed for some reason, this isn't really a surprise. So let's go ahead and dig into the seven infringements Gibson is accusing Armadillo of. The infringements are the Flying V body shape, the Explorer body shape, the ES body styles, the SG body shape, the dove wing or open book headstock design, the hummingbird name, and the modern trademark. So let's go ahead and dive into these and see if there's actually grounds for suing here or not. First things first, let's talk about the dove wing headstock design. This is what that looks like in an outline. Compared to the Dean version that's causing these issues, these are very similar headstocks. You can see they swoop by the nut the same. They kind of curve in and then out. There's a slight upward movement, but where they differ is the Dean version goes down, whereas the Gibson version creates that whole open book thing. This is kind of a tough one to say if they're too similar or not. In my opinion, I would say 90% of the characteristics are. It's just that 10% right there. But could it fool the average person just looking at these instruments? Maybe. I'm not sure if we'll see any movement here, but wouldn't that be crazy if Dean just had to use their other headstock designs on all of their guitars from now on? This is a Gibson Flying V. This is also a Flying V. Whatever style enters your mind first, you cannot deny that the Flying V is an iconic shape. It was originally introduced in the late 50s as a futuristic design that failed. However, it came back in the late 60s and it gained popularity in the late 70s and early 80s. And here's what Gibson is upset about. Dean has a line of guitars called the V series. And let's face it, when you compare this body shape to this body shape, I think they're undeniably too similar. They even copied a very similar tailpiece design. The only thing that's really significantly different is there is a pickguard on the Gibson version, whereas the Dean version does not. So it seems like this would definitely be grounds for a lawsuit over copyright infringement, but here's the problem. This instrument has been in production since 1977. From my understanding, if you don't defend your trademark, eventually you just lose the ability to defend it. So since this has been in production for 40 years, I think that's the only thing that looks bad on Gibson's part. In a pure black and white outline drawing of these instruments, you could tell they are undeniably too similar. Moving on, the Gibson Explorer, another iconic design from this company. It shares a similar history to the Flying V, except for it didn't come back until 10 years later in 1976. However, since then, it's been released under many different iterations, some of them freakier than others. And again, on the Dean side of things, very similar story here. It was first released in the late 70s, but again, you can't deny that these are the same instruments. The control layouts weren't really even changed. The only thing that's different is these are a string through design and the headstocks. The next main body style is the Gibson SG. First introduced in late 1960, this has been one of Gibson's longest running body styles ever. However, Dean's version is called the Grand Sport Series. I'm not really sure how they came up to that name, but I'm guessing they just flipped around SG and made something up for it. So take a look at this body. This is actually the first time I've ever seen one of these. So this is my first impressions. 
That's just an SG with a stretched out body in multiple locations. I'm not entirely too sure when this came out, but based off of a quick internet search, it seems like it was around 2013. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. So they might have a stronger suit against this body style. Next body shape in question is the Modern. Now, I'm not entirely too sure if there's something else that this refers to, since I couldn't find anything called a Dean Modern or a Luna Modern, but I'm guessing it's the ML design. I've never really sat down to think, huh, I guess those do look a little bit similar. It just has a longer top bout on it. The headstock might look similar to a Dean instrument, but that's not what the original Modern had anyways. These next two are aimed at Luna guitars, the Gibson Hummingbird. I personally like the Doves better, but you can't argue that the Hummingbird is not an incredibly iconic guitar. Luna Guitars has one called the Fauna Hummingbird. This one might be interesting because once again, Luna Guitars, fairly new company. It came out in 2005. So we're talking, you know, maybe a decade, decade and a half. I'm not sure when this particular model came out. So it's possible they might have grounds on this one using the Hummingbird name on an acoustic guitar. And they even have a Hummingbird in a very similar position. Now, obviously, these guitars don't look alike at all. It mainly just comes down to the name. It'll be interesting to see what comes out of this one. And the other one aimed at Luna are the ES styled instruments. Now looking at this and then looking at a Gibson ES-335, they are very similar. I mean, the only thing I can see here is like the bound F holes, the headstock, but they, they might be onto something with this one as well. Dean's CEO has made a statement saying all these claims are unfounded. However, I don't necessarily think I can agree with him. If Gibson would have done this back in the late 70s, I think this would be a completely different story than it is today in 2019. So in the end, do I think Gibson stands a chance at winning any of these suits? A few of them. I don't think they have any grounds on the Flying V and Explorer because, well, quite frankly, they're just way too late to do anything about it. I think they'll run into the same thing that Fender ran into, where their headstocks definitely fall under trademark, but the body shapes don't. This could potentially cause more trouble for Gibson than it's worth. Gibson might win the Grand Sport debacle and the two Luna cases, but I don't think they'll win over in the Dove Wing headstock. So if my predictions come true, they stand to make $6 million, but I don't think it's for the money at this point in time. Because what's $14 million to a giant corporation like Gibson? This mainly comes down to the principle of the matter. They want to let all the manufacturers know that they're just not going to take it sitting down anymore. That's why I'm kind of surprised Gibson got a lot of backlash for that video that they later removed. I think removing it was a terrible decision on their part. Sometimes when you make a statement, you got to stand behind it. So let me know your guys' thoughts on this whole situation in the comments section below. What outcomes do you think will come of this? And is this a reason that you would not want to buy from Gibson? And controversially, do you think this might be good for Dean guitars? It's kind of publicity in an instrument brand that usually doesn't get too much of it. So to end this video, let's go ahead and do some playing samples of Gibson guitars that are clearly inspired by something else. Troglodytes for watching, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.